Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Brookville Board of Selection meeting for um, July 27, 2021. Um, can we all rise to the stage of the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. all right. So we'll start off with the um, warrants. Um, can I get a motion to approve the expense warrant for $470,055.09 for 7-27-21? Approve the expense warrant for $1,032 even for 7-27-21 and approve the payroll warrant uh, in the amount of 144, 263, uh, and one penny for 728, uh, okay. You have a motion um, to approve the expense warrant, the two expense warrants, and the one payroll warrant. I'll second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And we have two sets of Board of Selectmen minutes from uh, the 13th of July. Did these come out in advance? Because I was just checking yes, my I email mean, this afternoon. When did they come out? I, I emailed them mm -hmm. last week. End of last week. week. Mid last week, maybe. Okay. But I know they went out because Adam and Nancy used to. Okay. I didn't get a chance to see them either because I haven't been able to get on to the new one. Oh, that's right. Email. Yeah, I, I, I got in late, but I have gotten mine working. And it works from my phone. I'm very oh, excited good, about good. that. So, Did you want a chance to read through these? Yeah. Or do we want to hold them for the next week? Hold that's them. entirely up to you. Do you want to take some time to review them? Uh, can I skip over them? So if you leave one of them with me, we can trade them. Because I think it's two sets of sessions. Yeah, okay. Session mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we get any feedback from um, the fish and boating access regarding putting in a high water mark? Yes, I contacted them and they gave us the go ahead to do it in both um, the north and south point. Either a dot or a line as we see fit. Okay. Honestly, probably a line just because people are people. Um, how would we, is it, was it set based off of a height above sea level? Yes. So the bylaw says 601 feet, that's above mean sea level. So really the only way to do it is to have a license surveyor come in and set the elevation. Now I will see if I can find somebody to do it for nothing. Um, do you think Dan happen. might be willing to do it for us? I'm sorry? Do you think Dan Leahy might be willing to do it for us? Because he's licensed, I believe. It'd be worth at least approaching him about it. Yeah, so what they so at South Pond uh, there's benchmarks for the bridge construction. So you, that's what you need to do is you need to work off of an established benchmark. I don't know where the benchmark might be at North Pond. But if you want to ask Dan, uh, that would be fine. Or, or if somebody, somebody else that, that we might be able to find to do it. Really. I don't know if they free, but at least the nominal fee. There's a fellow at the right of the club that lives in East Brookfield, and he also may be willing to do it for whatever the fee might be, I don't know. Right. Okay. So I can't commit to those funds, so I don't know if you, how you want to handle that. Can you get us a, um, some estimate. prices or an estimate, and then? I, I can ask. Okay, and then we'll see where okay. we can find, find some it. revenues. Yeah. Okay. Let's 
getting dark. Oh, we'll have it almost sounds like we're in a couple minutes. It is. Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to have a storm. storm. Oh, you have super stock. agendas. Can we put on old business as well as new business and stuff like that from the minutes from the previous meetings to make certain that we're following up on any of the action? Oh yes, absolutely. I think that would be a good way to make it clear that that loop closure is occurring on some of the discussions. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Motion to approve the sort meetings of 7 13 21. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, second, and I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's hard to run a meeting. Is that people? What sets did you approve? Yeah, just, okay. it was, she said the sets for it. So, and is the plural enough? Thank it you. is. Okay. Uh, so, first item on the agenda is uh, cable access resident concerns. Um, I believe he asked to be on the agenda, Mr. Holmfrey. Yes, I did. Okay, did you want to come up and speak to what your questions were? Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> Some of my concerns are, this cable access has been off for almost three years. Unacceptable, deplorable. We're taking money from charter every year to keep that access channel running, and it's not running, and people want it back on. So I'm bringing it to the table here and I wanna know what you're gonna do about it. Last time I brought it up to the town meeting a year ago and we were told all oh, the equipment's broken, this and that, and everybody said that's a bunch of hogwash. So we want it back on. What do we gotta to do to get it on? Okay, so. Sharon's doing all this filming day after day, all this hard work and it's not on. Okay, it's, it's not currently on cable access. That, that, is, a, that is a fact. Um, we do have uh, correspondence from uh, the chair of the Brookfield Public Access Committee, as well as some follow-on uh, communications mm -hmm. regarding this. Okay, uh, on a on a high level, um, fundamentally, there's been already been some action taken. So first of all, for even though it's not currently on the charter station, um, the uploads are occurring to the Brookfield community page. Okay, the June 29th meeting has been uploaded to the community media page. Uh, annual town meeting is now available there as well. There was no taping on the 13th because of the fact that we just had mm -hmm. a, a conflict with the with scheduling. Um, there has been identified that, that somewhere in the uh, updates to Brookfield Elementary School, that the coax was cut off to where the, the actual studio is for the charter access for the computers and for all the requirements for downloading. Um, they're in the process of scheduling with the custodian to get charter in there in order to get the coax cable reestablished so, so that charter can get that connection back in place um, and diagnose basically why it's broken, whether it's a case of, of the wiring inside the building or whether it has to do with mm -hmm. any other thing external to the building. Um, 
Let's see here. And I can provide you a copy of the information from the chair after this if you prefer. Um, let's see here. I think that's the high level. Um, we do have a new editing computer that has been delivered, but without that coax cable and the internet link in the studio, the computer only does us so much good. Once the link is established back in the, in the studio, we're going to be having the IT uh, provider for the town get that set up along with the new software. Um, that will um, allow both for the editing of the videos um, as well as the up as a kind of more streamlined upload. Editing? YouTube. What do you mean editing? What does that mean? Dead space at the beginning and the end. Okay. Um, putting in the, I think they put in some um, like welcome to Brookfield slides at the beginning and at the end. Um, <coughs> let's see here. Once they've got the internet net connection back, uh, they'll be able to reconnect uh, the Teleview system. Uh, and there is going to be some, some new software. They're going to be getting Adobe Creative Suite in order to um, be able to do things like light balancing and stuff like that with the, with the videos themselves. Um, and then once that occurs, um, it'll actually be back on the, on the cable station. Yeah, that when's that going to be? It's been almost three years. So it's, that's unacceptable. <clears throat> okay. So At when's it point, when's it going to go back on? I'm not going to give you a date. Rough, a rough idea. And I, I noticed it hasn't been on. Okay, so the tech the tech is supposed to. He was scheduled be to be there today. today, but I don't know what the yeah, end result was at that. Um, let's see here. So depending on the outcome <clears throat> from that, I'd say we would know about the internet connectivity, um, I would say probably within the next day or two, about at least how long it's going to take to get connectivity in place. Yeah. Um, if I was going to rough it out, and this is just a pure estimate based on Mm -hmm. on what I know it takes to get those steps and, and people's schedules and stuff, I'd say we're probably six to eight weeks away from having everything back in place, would be my guess. And who's going to run this studio? Who's going to get make sure it gets on the air? Um, that would be up to the chair of the committee to ensure that it gets Who's the chair and how many's on the committee? Uh, it's Kevin Urkula right now Yeah. is the chair, and right now it's a committee of two. And who's the chair? Kevin Urkel. Okay. So well, we're gonna get this thing back on. Yeah. So, but that would be my guess. Looking at the different steps in this, and based on what. How about YouTube? People say it's not on YouTube either. Is that true? I uh, that's not true. So the, a lot the, of the June 29th meeting is up on the Brookfield Community YouTube page. They say it's the very spotty. Time. Very spotty on YouTube. Okay. Well, the most recent meetings are up. There is a backlog of meetings to get up there. Right, that's my point. Okay. So um, there's no reason why the YouTubes can't be put on on a regular basis. Once we have the connectivity back on in on the studio, then they'll be able to use the new software to do kind of a mass upload of those. But until that time, I'm not going to commit to getting the rest of the backlog of videos up there. So once we get the... But why did we get behind if the YouTubes were, were able to get on? That wasn't a problem with the studio. YouTubes is a whole different animal, and they didn't get put on. Why would there be a backlog if there's no problem with putting YouTube on? I didn't say that there was no problem in getting YouTube back on. It's possible. You can do it off-site away from... But there is a problem because they, they didn't get on, because we had a backlog. So there was a problem of them not getting on the YouTube. So, I don't have that information at this time. So we need to get the YouTube up and going, and then we need to get the public access back. Okay, so public access, again, what do you mean public access? You mean the channel? The channel, public access channel, okay. that's what it's called. So, okay. I told you we're looking at probably eight weeks. So have someone let me know in a couple of days what charter comes up with, or the tech, or whoever you got going in there. Can we go ahead and, once we get the information, share it with Mr. Holcraft? Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. So. That's, uh, 
needs to be back on. I don't disagree with we you. We take on all that money and then nothing's getting done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Trust me, we're going to spend, okay. we're I'm gonna a lot of the money in order to get this fixed. So. And and again, who's going to who's going to we're going to have a, so who's going to run it if we don't want to get two people on the committee? Who's going to? Well, one of the things that we also have in the works, and it's part of the plan that's been provided to us by the chair, is that they had a position approved a couple of town meetings ago. Um, we need to get that posting back out as well, actually. We need to coordinate sorry, with the chair. Jesus. There was actually a cable coordinator approved at town meeting okay. uh, a couple of years ago, yeah, actually. Couple years ago. And yeah. There's, and there's so I was going to say, I don't remember do seeing that. No, it wasn't on this morning. A couple years either, ago. I think it was, it, I think I want to say it was 20... At least two years ago, yeah. In, in Maybe three. And is the position funded? Or is that going to... It comes out of the cable access funds. Yeah, okay. yeah, we got money. Yeah. So I know that there was a job description. Um, okay. I think you may want to just reach out to the chair and see if they're okay with us running with what was previously approved for the position. So we're getting on... We, we should be working on getting a staff together now before, so we have it when the thing gets okay. up, well, up and why I just asked right well, I'm just I'm just want to make sure that's very good that's good as long as we come up with a positive end yeah. result is right. what we want Absolutely. good okay all right I'm gonna stay on it understood okay. thanks Thank for your you. interest Policy discussion. Um, we have let's pull up the information. That's the cable folder. Yeah. What's that? I know. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I'll get there eventually. People are just gonna have to be patient. Especially where I think I actually need to go see the eye doctor. Um, <laughs> so the town had an employee. Uh, it has an leave of absence bylaw or a vacations um, requirement to get permission prior to mm -hmm. taking a, a vacation or in the case mm -hmm. of personal time. And then the Board of Selectmen had also put in place an employee absence policy and they didn't quite mesh. So when I came across the, the conflict, I edited the policy to reflect, um, I made it more generalized, which it listed specific positions, but there are many other positions that should also have been listed. So rather than enumerating specific positions, it just says that it applies to all appointed personnel, including department heads entitled to time off benefits. So that we didn't miss any department heads. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just to make the policy uniform yeah. and compliant with the personnel bylaw. So then we have to change this in the personnel bylaw. We, oh, we have to have we have to have a vote by town meeting to change it. No, because we're not changing the bylaw. Yeah. We're simply just changing the policy the to policy. it. It, it okay. actually just complements the bylaw and mm -hmm. gives them a procedure okay. so that the bylaw can be um, properly followed. Okay. So here's the form, use this, get permission mm -hmm. first, this is who you need permission yeah. from, attach it to your payroll. That way the town has an accurate accounting of people's mm -hmm. time off, which helps with HR and buyback in oh, the yeah. future in case it's needed. Or there's a dispute, we'll okay. have a record. Okay, here's one it was appointed by. Okay, so, so what you're recommending is that we edit the existing employee absence policy to read all appointed personnel? Yes. Hmm. And then I added the second paragraph below this, where employees of a department are required to report to their department head for notice and permission, which is what the bylaw says they have to do. So this policy only covered department heads, but not all of them. Hmm. Yes. This covers everybody and then the, the employee goes to the appropriate department head or um, to the board to submit their request for a vacation. 
I think this is good. No, it, I think like it just, it just cleans, cleans it up. Cleans yeah, it it up. just cleans it yeah. up and puts a procedure in place to, to make sure that it's uniform mm -hmm. rather so, than each department doing something. I do I do have a question. Yes. Though. Um, we do have some elected officials that by virtue of their position also receive vacation and personal time. Mm -hmm. um, this is silent with regards to that, and I know that they don't have to that's why it says Ask all for, appointed positions. Right, but I'm wondering if, if can we institute at least a, a, an expectation that, that elected officials will at least notify the select board of their schedule? Oh, certainly, yeah. that could absolutely yeah. be added. I, I, if I, 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 elected I, officials are strongly encouraged to notify yes. the board in order to mm -hmm. maintain appropriate records. Maintain appropriate records and to mm -hmm. ensure that, um, you know, that, that there's you know, awareness and appropriate coverage, you know. Okay, yeah. Something along those lines. Absolutely. I, I don't have a problem adopting this as is, but I, but then we can adopt the update yeah. that includes the that should, that should be. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Um, and I know that we can't make it a requirement, but we can at least encourage yeah. the behavior. I, so. I always did that years ago. I tell when I, I would always write them a note, let them know when I was going to be out and I'd be back in right. today. But it was an elected, or was it an elected? Yeah. It was appointed. No, elected. Town clerk positions elected. Oh, that's right. It was treasurer that went from one to the other. Yeah. So that's what I used to do. I would always write them, and I would always put a sign up to them so people knew that uh, the office was closed. Okay. Um, are you going to do up um, the new, um, the form, say, that we have that we uh, ask for? That people ask for permission. Those are in kind of rough shape. Yeah, I thought they. they so are. I would be I would be happy to create an yeah. electronic version yeah. that can be printed for yeah. people who don't I, have access. Yes. I think that yeah, oh, the other ones I know those are kind of outdated. Okay, so uh, can I get a motion to approve the policy as written? I will give you a motion to uh, approve the policy as it is written. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At least get us closer to the meeting, right? Yeah. And then we can update it from there. want to cover um, a couple of different items. The uh, TA is signatory for contracts. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and I think fundamentally, Kelly, you're recommending that um, for kind of standard process contracts mm -hmm. that we delegate yeah. use the signatory? Yes, mm -hmm. it would make it much quicker. Yeah. For instance, I would sign off on the state um, standard form for grant, mm -hmm. rec to yes. receive grants. Uh, for Chapter 90 reimbursements, the money spent, the, the states already decided whether the project was okay before they did yeah. it. So it's just a, it's just a formality. Yeah. Right. Things like purchasing the, the, the Heller home, um, buying a fire truck, starting with a new vendor that would be, uh, or, or a new um, outsourced service like the treasurer, mm -hmm. that would come yeah. before the board for discussion and, right. and approval. Mm -hmm. And then, as a signature, I can sign it once you've reviewed it and approved yeah. it. Right. So that would be. Okay. I think that's a good idea, then it doesn't hold it up. It, it would save yeah. a lot of, of time and I make it, it much will. more convenient mm -hmm. without having to wait for a quorum yeah. of signatures to do that. Okay. So uh, do you want to make a motion? Then? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that the town administrator can be the signatory for all contracts. Uh, and I'll second. Favorite? Aye. Aye. Okay, and then the final policy was the uh, was that we need to uh, just for the sake of I yeah. guess speed um, yeah. adopt the uh, uh, 
Under Mass General Law, we're allowed to adopt that it only requires a single member of the Board of Selectmen to uh, approve a warrant. Correct. So you would not yeah. at the town meeting, you would not at the meetings need to say, you know, that like you did this evening yeah. where you voted to approve each warrant, yeah. that person, whoever is um, chosen, would review the warrant, sign the warrant. The entire board is still responsible mm -hmm. for what's in that warrant. And then the, the um, member, the board member who signed it would need to report at the next, provide a report at the next meeting that these warrants were signed and these are the amounts. Mm -hmm. That's, it just makes it cleaner and that way you don't have to worry again about having a quorum come in and sign them and then having the uh, vouchers go out or the payments go out late to the vendors. Okay, I, I guess my one question about this is that do we have to pre-designate as part of the vote or can it be any one of us so long as we provide You have to pre-designate uh, okay. as part of the vote. Sure, sure. And you can have an alternate so that if someone goes on vacation you have a second person. And since Adam's not here, I suggest you nominate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> no. That's actually really funny, but I, I, I won't do that. No. Even though that oh, is good, the, because oh, it was that actually is, meant that, in that, jest. That is, that is was, the way of meeting, so. <laughs> yeah. it, it was meant the in jest. The person that's not here just to do it. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is if we, did, if we had you as the signer and me yeah. as the alternate sure. because you're in yeah. the town hall most often and yeah. I'm physically closest okay. so between the two of us one of us ought to be able right. to sign it. Oh yeah. That works. That works. That works out so, perfectly. So can we get a motion to that effect? Oh, okay. Uh, like to have a motion to adopt uh, one signature for the warrants. Um, and that I would be the uh, the main person and Beth will be the, the alternate. Okay. Great. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, one question I want to ask, though, if say if I'm the only, all right, say if I'm the only signer, then uh, it wouldn't go on to be approved till the following week. No, you're approving it when you sign. Oh, okay. It. It's, right. it's instantly approved upon your review and signature. Okay. 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 Next up in the firing line is a resignation from Zach Edwards. Um, who is resigning as harbor master as of the 15th of July. Uh, so can I get a motion to approve, to accept his resignation? Uh, you have a, a motion to accept the resignation of the harbor master. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and then we do have a request for appointment into that role, um, and that is uh, from Nick Tomo, um, who has expressed an interest in this uh, appointment. Mm -hmm. Um, for everybody's awareness, that is a, a uh, lifetime appointment. Or wait a second, no. It's, yes, it is, is a lifetime. It is yeah, a lifetime is. appointment yeah. unless they resign. Resign or removed for neglect of duty, negligence, or conduct unbecoming a harbor master. Oh, I don't think so. So, um, but actually, given his performance as our CEO, I'm actually pretty comfortable yeah. asking Nick to serve yeah. in that regard because if there's anybody who excels at that, at that sort of work. It's, it's, it's Nick. Nick. Yeah. So, uh, so can we get a motion to appoint him? I will make a motion to uh, to appoint Nick Tomo to be the uh, power master. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We should see if uh, he wants an assistant, though. It looks like we have that option as well. So you do, yes. Depending on how active that, that role is going to be. So, um, we did also get um, a notice, uh, or at least the highway superintendent passed on a notice from um, Lucinda Thompson, or Cindy Thompson, uh, regarding her retirement, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. So, um, effective October 1st, um, she's given 18 years to the town. Um, so, you know, obviously we're gonna accept this with, with regrets. Yes. Um, it's unfortunate. Yes. They've already advertised um, for a replacement, and she's hoping to have strong yeah. overlap. Yeah, to overlap so that they'll Maybe be able to come um, acclimate the new person yeah. to right. that position. Right. So it's not like we have a bunch of standard work in place because yeah. Cindy's been doing it for so long. So, yeah. yeah. She also was the Board of Health Secretary for quite a few years also. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, here and then also yeah. in up North in, uh, Brookfield. Yeah, North Brookfield well. also. So. Um, a lot of service to the 
to various municipalities. Yep. So, um, but uh, I know that um, Kelly, you had you had asked a question about whether we do formal certificates. I think mm -hmm. we typically have done some ad hoc gifts, but then we haven't ever had anything formal. But I think it might be it might be uh, good if we establish something. Uh, for that, particularly with, with things like retirements and, like mm -hmm. you said, just service awards. For the yeah, five years, 10 years, 15 years, years, years with the town, years. something to recognize and acknowledge the hard work yeah. of the people who put their time in. Mm -hmm. Right. One of the things I'd be interested in sorting out as we do that is um, we've probably missed a lot of opportunities to provide that recognition, so we probably want to ID the people who, at least for their, whatever would have been their last service award, um, mm -hmm. what we want to do with that. So I think we want to take a look at it and see, you know, if we're going to establish that, I think we need to do it going forward, but also at least look in the rearview mirror for folks that are still here and ID what the last award mm -hmm. should have been. I remember when I retired, um, they did one up it was in a nice frame, and it said how many years that I had worked here for the town of Brookfield, and uh, and uh, also it was the three selectmen that signed it, and it right. had like um, mm -hmm. the, a gold seal on it. So something like that. That's right. Nice. Actually, what I had in mind. Yeah, yeah, in a nice, nice frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. But then, yeah, I, I definitely would like to do something for Cindy, but also let's take a look at some of the folks who are still in service yeah. and, mm -hmm. and see what we need to do about recognizing them as well. Okay, do we need to vote to accept this, or is this more of a notification? That's just a notice. You don't yeah. need to vote to accept that. Yeah, I didn't figure, so. I saw the half page. It was like a half page ad that we did. Yes, I saw that too. Yes, that was that was an interesting choice. Then it was a smaller one. Where did I see a smaller they, one? They they did not intend for that ad for, to be published the way it was. Yeah. They sent the information to the newspaper, and the newspaper um, published everything they sent as opposed to what they'd asked for. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it, it, I saw it and I was like, wow, this is, these people are serious. <laughs> they really want to get some, somebody's attention yeah, with so, this. So, with this the paper time. needed some, something to fill space. And <laughs> <laughs> but, but then this past week, I think, when the paper came out, it, it was a small one. Right. The, what it should have been. <laughs> I know. So. They probably didn't have anything to fill that spot, so that's why they <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. I didn't know the whole story. I haven't spoken to the paper, but I was impressed with the size of the ad. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, moving on. Town treasurer options. Um, Kelly, you had asked to get this on the agenda, and I know yes. we had talked informally yeah. about it previously, that, yes. that one of the things we wanted to look at was bringing that mm -hmm. position back in-house. Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense to me. There, You have enough retirees that need to contact the um, treasurer, treasurer on a regular yep. basis. Mm -hmm. they, they pay out the veterans benefits. People need to have somebody on the ground here that they can talk to that's dedicated mm -hmm. to just Brookfield. Yes. Sarah does a fantastic job. Her people do a fantastic job, but we don't currently have a contract with them. Right. Um, and I'm not sure that they're interested in continuing so much as they're doing the town a favor because they don't have an op we don't have any options at the moment. I think she so. had told me when I had talked to her about that uh, that she said that they she'd probably do it for another year. She really didn't want to do it, but we didn't really have anybody here. Okay, so that's just confirming mm -hmm. that yes. we need to have somebody yeah. in house, and um, it's it's a really important position. Mm -hmm. So it. it yeah, I think I think we had had we had had a discussion with her. I think I had no. also had a one-off discussion yeah. with her regarding asking her to cover this next year, so we had the time to, to mm. hire appropriately. Yeah. Does that okay. makes any sense? Yes, yes, it does. That makes perfect sense. It's a difficult to identify skill set, and in some instances, mm -hmm. finding somebody that that brings that to the table is going to take some time. Yeah. In coordination. Yes. Yes, and and um, there is currently no um, HR factor in Sarah's contract. Correct. So they've been helping and doing some of it, but when it comes to discussing future benefits for people and what we have for benefits mm -hmm. and how it can impact their future benefits, we need somebody on the yeah. ground. 
to do that, and yes. that really is a treasurer's position. Okay. So I would I would like to see the town tweak the job description yeah. to ensure that the benefits um, component is part of the job yes. description that they're capable mm -hmm. of handling that, and that the salary be worth what the job is worth. So, so mm -hmm. what did we budget because we were paying an outsourced provider? Because I know eighty five this year. Oh, eighty five this year. Plus expenses, and there are mm -hmm. other there are other things in that. That's just for that's the for, company. Yeah. Right. That's the whole company. So understood. But that ought to give us the room. I think the way that we phrased that line item was it could be used for either internal or external service. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, treasurer services yeah. are treasurer services. Yeah. Right. So, so um, it sounds like we have a couple of steps in this process. One is to modify the job description in front of us to include mm -hmm. HR duties. Mm -hmm. And two would be to identify what's the right uh, pay leveled was was the Collins Center silent on treasurer or that I don't know. I um, still haven't seen the Collins Center's. Um, I don't. I don't report think. as. I can forward it to you. Oh, know. that would be lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, as as. Remind, if I don't remember, just poke me. Okay. Via either email um, or text. Okay. But uh, I know I have it in my set now. So. Okay, I can do um, that. The town of Charlton just advertised for one, and I think they, it hasn't been in again. I'm sure that they must have found someone. Okay. So, so they are out there because that was one of the things that I. Well, I, I saw the applications that you received in, um, for the last job search. They were slim and slimmer yeah. with zero municipal experience. Right. No. One of the reasons you may not have had anybody apply is there's no salary range listed. Mm -hmm. on the website yeah. or in the advertisement. And okay. people aren't going to waste their time applying for, applying for a position that they may not be able to take because of, of mm -hmm. financial circumstances okay. or that they've got you know, a lot of experience and they're looking at a $40,000 a year job or a $70,000 a year job. It's going to make a huge yeah. difference oh, sure. in the caliber of the applicant. So. Fluff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, it's raining. I wonder what that noise. So, can can you bring to us a recommendation based on the the budget and what we would expect with the hiring timeline of, of what you think we can get to in terms of salary, right size for the community? And how forward to the Collins Center information? I think they did the treasurer, even though the treasurer at the time refused to answer their, their questions. Yeah. Oh, that was tax bill. Mm. interesting. There's a long narrative around it. And, okay. And I think if we're going to hire someone, it's got to be somebody who is an actual treasurer from, from a community, if we can find one, and have municipal experience. Yes, municipal experience yes. is key, but you yeah. may find that you have someone who is not technically a treasurer but oversees a treasury department in a you know, the entire financial yeah. department. Yeah. So somebody they, like that. Yeah, somebody they would the, have somebody all the, the knowledge they need, but not and it can't necessarily the certificate as a treasurer, yeah. but know enough of the job yes. to oversee we can't have the somebody, accountant, the treasurer, yeah. you know. Because yeah, we can't <laughs> have somebody collector. come in like we had, you know, before. Uh, a retired one had come in and tried to teach somebody with useful experience, and it didn't work well. Yeah, no, so it doesn't work. We're crossing over from the no. pu private sector to the public sector. Yeah, is, it doesn't is, work. Well, we've actually... It's like two we've, different we've, languages. We've actually, it's like changing countries. We've actually countries. swung and missed a lot, actually. So, I mean, to be frank, we've hired people with municipal experience yeah. that haven't worked out. We've hired people without municipal experience that haven't worked out. I mean... It's a tough position to fill. I was looking through. I was looking through the beacon this morning, and there are, there are several towns looking for treasurers. Yeah. So, but I can reach out and find out what a uh, typical treasurer's sure. salary is for small towns. It's not the population, it's the budget size. Right. That's what Understood. makes the difference. Yep. So I would, I would be more prone to pick a, a town with 8,000 people that has a $9 million budget, budget than a 3,000 people that has yeah. a $15 million budget. It's very, very, very yeah. different. So something that kind of meets in the middle. Right. Um, and I'll work with Lori on that. I know that yeah. she did quite a bit with the, um, with the study to get the salaries and grades. And right. L Lori was the one that helped find uh, Sarah. Yeah. She knew Sarah. Um, and now 
didn't, when I, you and I had talked, I think it was the other day, didn't you say we should get somebody that can be here full time? Yes. Yes, we need somebody here yes, full time. Yes, they need to be here full time. Maybe. Especially because the school is very big oh. and payroll is yes. a very, very large mm -hmm. component yeah. of yeah. this. So they need yeah. to have, they need and, to be. And there's just complicated, it's not just the payroll, it's all the withholding and all the Correct. The annuity. Yeah, the annuity. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot. I'm sorry. That's a little bit technical lot. term. Yeah. But I, was so. want, I don't know if you would want to get in touch with Charlton and just ask him how long. I've, I've already got it here. Check yeah. with Charlton. Well, and actually, yeah. <laughs> probably the one place yeah. outside of, and I guess it's still technically municipal, but probably the other potential source for. Somebody would be somebody with school system. Um, yes, financial office. Because it, yeah, it's it's not necessary. It is municipal. It, it, it's it just, is, but it isn't. It's a different component yeah. of. Yeah. It's quasi municipal. Yeah. But they would be familiar yeah. with a lot of what makes that job mm. complex for us. So I mean, that might be the only kind of like parallel industry mm. experience that might work. All right. So what I'll do is I for uh, there's a lot of things going on right now, but I will try and have this done for the next meeting so that you have. Um, I think one of the things to yeah. do though is if we're going to put pay, I think if we're going to put pay in the it needs to be a salary range. Needs to be a range. It needs to be a range. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, it has to yeah. be a range. It's not going to be this is what you're getting because. Yeah. This you might have applicant most of the requirements. You might have somebody that's mm. way overqualified. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And another thing, um, do you feel that they would need to have an um, assistant treasurer? They may. I think. I think we need to look very hard at, at how much of the um, data entry can be done by a clerk. Right. Mm. That yeah. then can be reviewed by the treasurer as opposed to the paying the treasurer to sit there and just Do plug in numbers when yeah. they could be dealing with other issues. Mm. Um, yeah, so we would actually need to look at that total budget and split yeah. it between the two positions yes. and but figure out what, what is court for. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And then even an assistant, they can maybe even handle uh, the human resources end of it. No. Oh, no, just no. you want the treasurer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes. Because we, so. I shouldn't have just said no. That wasn't that wasn't appropriate. I apologize. What, what? It's not advisable. That's, what, yeah. how it's, that? it's that's not, a great way. Yeah. That's a great okay. term. That's not advisable because, in order to get somebody in the position that is of the proper caliber, you will need the majority of the payroll that's going to the current company. Okay. You may have some wiggle room to have a part-time data entry clerk mm -hmm. that would come in and and help with mm -hmm. okay. um, just data entry you don't need a high level of skill just need to be computer savvy and know how to work with excel basically okay. um, that way you don't have to have another uh benefited position right yeah okay. yeah you can so we got to look at the overall you either have to have a clerk that's under where, where do, what's our benefit thresholds um, i know in the 20, state of massachusetts 20 hours you have to work 20 hours to, to have that State of Massachusetts is what, 980 hours is the benefit threshold? Or does it not apply because we're a municipality? No, it does not apply because no. we're a municipality. No, the, the threshold for a municipality is anything over, tw is 20 and up. Yeah, 20 and So 19.999999, no benefit. No, no benefit. 20 hours, and it doesn't matter if they hold four different yeah. jobs, if they're working a combined because you're the same employer. So yep. if yep. they're working 20 hours or more, they're entitled to all yeah. the benefits. Because the because the other option, and I know we haven't pursued it, and I don't know what your feelings are on it, is if, is is um, at least starting for a clerk like that through the temp, through a temporary agency, even though it's more expensive, um, so that you know what. I don't have any experience with temp agencies, and it, that might be the way you want to go if you've got somebody who needs somebody in here on the ground. But Sarah doesn't need a temp, right? And Getting a temp in, you're going to need another computer. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what we're going to need for that. I don't know what we have as far as technology goes for the treasurer's position. I know that there was a treasurer and assistant treasurer at one well, point, yes. right? So. I think they were working off the same computer. 
No, she had the assistant had a had a desk that was out in the main office, and she had her own computer. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. When it was a municipal court and when it was an yeah. assistant treasurer, mm -hmm. okay. there was a second. Yeah. There so was. I guess what we need to look at is you have a lot of um, part-time clerk positions available. Mm -hmm. Maybe having one full-time clerk that works in different departments that are designated. Yes. You are here 10 hours here, you are 10 hours here, you are five hours here. I think we have to be careful with the financial clerks though because there's, I think treasurer and collector can share one, but. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then. Because it's not across the firewall to the accountant. Right, yeah, we wouldn't mm -hmm. have anything with the accountant yeah, no. involved in that, no. And you couldn't have like say an assessor's clerk work for the tax collector. Artists, right? I think we had we ran into that problem one time. I think it would depend on what they were doing. Oh. If they're not committing any funds to the collector, and they, okay, they're not even paying. if it was an assistant assessor. Right. If they're not oh. committing any oh, okay. funds to the collector, they're not part of that process. They're just entering field work data. That would be completely different oh, okay. than if they were working on the LA four, yep. for example, for the okay. for the recap sheet. So um, I wouldn't recommend cross-pollinating mm -hmm. any of the financial departments, no. yeah. but having a, someone who's typing minutes right. also working as a treasurer's yeah. data entry person yes. is not going to be an issue. Yeah. As long as they're not submitting any of the vouchers yes. or bills or okay. payroll. So it sounds like the actions there are modification of the job description. Yes. You would kind of look to the Board of Selectmen, or do we look back to you and say, take a look at it, or did you actually want input from us regarding the, the verbiage or what have you to incorporate it? Well, that's entirely up to you. And until we know each yeah. other really well, I don't know what you want to hand off and what you don't. So everything you're getting everything right. until you say, Kelly, you do that. Okay. And then Kelly will do that. Okay. <laughs> I think I would like to see Kelly do the. I'd like a proposal from you. Okay, me. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd like, if you, you know, if we agree, I think I'd like to have you do the, um, the job description. Okay. Obviously, we have control issues on the final as well, or else you yes. wouldn't have gotten the feedback on the oh, yeah. policy. But we're happy to get a draft. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's fine. I have no issue with that. I'll write it up. You make all the decisions. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay, great. Um, accountant services contract is next on the agenda. Oh, that was taken off. We never received it. Oh, okay. So we can discuss why it's there, or you can pass over it till the next meeting. It's entirely we'll discuss up to you. why it's there. I'm kind of cool with that. All right. So um, we Brookfield hired the firm of Eric Kinsher through the Pioneer Valley yes. Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. They went out to bid on accounting services. That contract is at an end at the end of this month. Okay. Pioneer Valley went out to bid again, and Kinshirk did not apply for the program. Okay. For to be part of the bid package. Corey is an excellent accountant. Mm -hmm. The firm is an excellent firm. If possible, it would be wonderful to keep that firm and hire them privately. Yeah as opposed to being part of the PVPC bid package yeah. group. Okay. And if I recall, we knew that this might be where we wind up yeah. and we budgeted appropriately yeah. to what yeah. we Yes, that, that was my be. understanding yes. as well. So yes. I reached out, I asked Lori to reach out to Eric and have him send a proposal. Yeah. And he was supposed to send it last week, but you know, when you're busy, yeah. time yeah. slips away. So we didn't get it, so I was hoping to have it tonight because I wanted to have it in place prior mm -hmm. to the expiration of the current contract. Um, if I get it in a couple of days, if the board is um, amenable to this particular path, then um, I would like to ask for another meeting to be review. able to review okay. and sign it. I can email it to you for okay. review and then um, have wow. a quickie meeting to sign yeah. it or to you know approve it. Why don't we target, I won't be available um, Thursday, 
either Wednesday or Thursday of next week. So can we try to put something on the calendar strictly for that uh, and push Eric to get us the proposal yeah. prior to that Could day? We, mm -hmm. Well, Wednesday, I, uh, Wednesdays I work for Mike, so I wouldn't be available on Wednesday. I right. mean, I'm here. Which, which you just said you're not available for no, Wednesday or Thursday? I'm not available Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Okay, so... Okay. so Monday or two, probably a Tuesday. Yeah, I'll see if I can get it from him. We okay. can set up a tentative meeting for um, Tuesday. Yeah. And then okay. We can either set it up in the evening or we could set up a noon meeting because generally I am available um, 12 to 1 on Tuesdays. Okay. So if it's something, like if we keep it to a limited agenda. Yeah. It would just be the contract. Yeah. That would be the only So why don't we put it agenda. on the yeah. calendar for noon for okay. Tuesday yeah. okay. and then just... And most Push of to get it. And Adam's yeah. working from home, isn't he? He is. Yeah, so it's easy. He can come up. Or he could or he could call in yeah, he call because in. as long as we have a quorum in the room, yeah. he can just call in and participate. Yes. And that was actually suspended until No, so. actually that's regular open meeting law. I understand, but that was suspended. The governor issued a new order and you do not need a quorum yet oh. in the room. Ooh, okay. So Oh you don't you need a quorum. Needs, you just need somebody who's running the meeting and like a chair or equivalent. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I can't remember. I think it's till September. Yeah. So yeah, that might got, get, ex get, that might get extended yeah. the way things are having the breakthrough issues that they're having. We're, we might have some wiggle room there. So. So. And um, we get on that. If we do like, when we do, we're with Pioneer Valley. Didn't we have to pay them a fee also? To be part of. Yes, we did. Yes, we had. We had to pay them a fee. It was a service fee, and we paid it. Yes, at the, at the, um, the bill that I just paid, actually. Oh, was, oh, so we pay Pioneer Valley a yes. service fee to be part of that. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Service fee. Yes. Yeah. For the buying leverage, hypothetically speaking. Mm -hmm. so. Actually, without that relationship, they might they might not have been willing to take us on. So it worked out for us. Actually. I'm excited that they're willing to stay. Yes, yes, I am too. I think they have it laid out the way they want it. They have a level of yeah. confidence of. Yeah, and Lori's done so, the company through Lori has done so much work to get our books straight. To get oh, books yeah. um, up to better and, and fastly approaching up to snuff. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> fastly does. approaching. Lori does an excellent job. It would be yeah. sad to lose her because I don't know where we'd find somebody else as good as her. So, and I think that would fall in, would that fall into the category of contracts that we would be authorized, we've already authorized you to approve someone who have a budget for it? Or yes, okay. yes, so you would discuss it, you'd review it, approve yep. it, and then I could simply sign okay. it. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. With any amendments, should you see fit to make any. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so, CMRPC. Yes. Is that a one-year contract? Uh, Typically, it has been. Yeah. I would like to see it be a three-year contract. I don't know that Eric will do a private contract for less than three. And contracts stay in them subject to appropriation. So he would give us a set fee for the next three years. And then it's, again, subject to appropriation. So if the town weren't to approve whatever's appropriate, you know, whatever he's mm -hmm. asking for, then that would be the end of the contract. So there's, a, there's an out for the town if there's an issue with mm -hmm. appropriation. I agree. I think Larry's done a great job, and I think that was exactly what we needed to have happen in the light of where we were financially. And just, um, if it's going to be a three-year contract, what's the fourth year looking at? I mean, down the road, are, there, are, we, are we comfortable with that? That we were going to proceed, or you know, yeah. are you thinking of, of hiring a full time in house accountant? I, I'm just asking, yeah. you know. so that was a problem, too. I remember, yeah, finding yeah. people. Be, yeah. What's happening is a lot of the um, municipal long timers are aging out, yeah, That's what they're retiring. Mm -hmm. COVID knocked a lot of people yeah. out of the loop, and they just mm -hmm. they're just done. And there's nobody young coming up in the ranks to fill the positions. And unfortunately, I think this may have recently changed, but in order to go to municipal accounting school to be a certified municipal accountant, you must have a municipal accountant job. In order to get a municipal accountant job, you must have a municipal certification as a municipal accountant. So, 
It, it's just it's just this big circular ridiculousness, so that it's very difficult for someone new to break into the positions because well, these again, small towns don't have a system. Not unique to that one position. Oh no, it's not. The assessor school's the same. Yeah. The accountant school's the same. The treasurer school's like Town that. Clerk school also. The tax collector Everybody. schools like that. If you, you are know, not, we need to just absolutely start reaching out to our representatives and say that what that is going is on? Stop. Yeah, it really we really should. They want everybody certified. The um, the program at Suffolk mm -hmm. to have a, a municipal manager's certificate, you have to be in a municipal position to get into the program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do we get new people in if yeah. they only let the people who are already here in? Yeah. You know, so it's kind of a source of frustration. But well, I think a lot of that, unfortunately. The flip side of that is most of those rules are in place because yeah. somebody lobbied to have those rules in place in order to, to it's kind of like aerospace certification, right? AS9100, now I think we're up to D or E, exists to create a barrier to entry into the industry unless you're willing to commit a certain amount of resources to something. Um, and, and I think what happens sometimes with those certifications is people in the industry try to put up barriers to entry mm -hmm. to people from outside the industry. And I think that's one of those things that needs to, yeah. to get fixed. It, it so. would be nice if, yeah. if, you were, if, if people were allowed to be trained in these fields because it would, it would really, you know, free market, right? Yeah. yeah. You get more people that need jobs than... There are jobs, and yet it's just the opposite here. So the one that found Eric for us was Mary Jane Handy. She's oh, oh from a DOR. Yeah, do yeah. She because I had called her. We didn't have an account. We didn't have an accountant. We wound up doing the same thing when yeah. um, Kinsher first became decided to become a regional accounting yeah. service. Holland was one of the very first towns to hire him. Mm. And there were some growing pains, but yeah. it, it's worked out really well. Cool. They're still there. They've been yeah. there for six or seven so, years. So now. there's some, there's like a town administrator mailing list, correct? There's a town there's a small town administrator listserv, yes. Listserv. Yeah. Can, can we just check if there's any other towns where people want to sign up for a letter drafted with support from several communities regarding this whole, like, for water departments and for things, <laughs> positions like the treasurer about... Um, you know, some sort of path to certification that doesn't involve Yeah, the president that. of STAM would be, will be all over this. He will love this. I mean, it just, it seems like it would be a great opportunity to open that dialogue, particularly where we're in the midst yeah. of the, the aging out of most of the, you know, municipal position people. Mm -hmm. When the water department was looking for a superintendent four years ago, uh, we met with MassDEP in reference to trying to kind of regionalize uh, the position, and they were and very supportive of that. You have to be very careful um, in doing that. Be sure that you're balanced, you know, in each town um, or towns or whoever get involved in that. But uh, I know in the water side, reach out let's redo a little reach across and see if they want to sign on to, yeah. to remind the state house they work for us. so uh, okay so next on the agenda um, we've got the CDG invoice 29 for um, it looks like we've got um, a total of ten thousand eighty eight hundred eighty eight dollars and twelve cents and it was reduced by $56.72, so I guess the bottom line is $10,831.40. So do we have a 
motion. Yes, we have a motion to approve the payment for the CMRPC invoice number 29. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're just going to do it since it's on the agenda, even though we voted that you can do it going forward. That's fine. Oh, oh yeah, you That's can do fine. these also. Mm -hmm. No, good. It's my, I think we need. Don't we usually all sign it? That's fine. The last time we have to do that. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so we've got multiple permit applications here for fishing tournaments. It looks like two of them are for the same date. Yeah, but the ones at South Pond and ones in Quaver Bar. Oh, I, I didn't catch right. that part. I just so saw the got, dates going. Um, oh, and these are canoes and kayaks? The first the, one's the, canoe. The one for uh, August 7th is canoes and kayaks. The other two, the other two fishing derbies. Oh. Because yeah. the, the, the part that I saw didn't say they were for fishing derbies. I didn't. Maybe. Adam signs these are on the second page. Yeah, he yeah. usually signs, but where he's not here, I yeah. think we can. Yeah, we I can think sign. I can probably sign it. Okay. So, looks like we've got um, Koi Bog Pond um, for the seventh uh, of August. We've got a request for Koi Bog Pond for the uh, for nine four, and then one for South Pond uh, for nine four. So, can I get a motion to approve these? You have a motion to approve the uh, special use permits. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to sign the cemetery deed. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Got another lineup change from Charter. Um, they're going to launch Catholic TV Network on SPP Basic and Tier Starter TV Channel 101. Um, we've got teaching board of selectmen women in, from the uh, Recreation Committee. They wanted to bring to our attention South Pond uh, that there is. A small area on the right from four to five cars in the lake adjacent to the beach. To the right is an area that is uh, bordered by large rocks, um, presumably to keep the cars off, and there's no parking painted on the asphalt that is being ignored or not seen because it is on the asphalt. And then no alcohol and no littering is also being ignored. Uh, there was evidence that was evident in the area in question. The rock border has two spaces wide enough for a car to enter. You need to have two large rocks boulders in the center to fill in the spaces. The grass area in question had a park car and a family having a picnic and playing loud music. We left because it was loud and disturbing. My wife and I felt that you should be informed that the town lake property rules are being ignored and making it difficult for others to enjoy the lake and beach privilege. Uh, from Ron, Roland Blaze on 5 Maple Street. So um, I know we had talked about collecting fees and about 
getting support to collect those fees and to have attendance so that we can remind people of the rules. Uh, can we reach out to the beach committee and find out where they might be in terms of um, starting to do fee collection and potentially applying that to get an, uh, an attendance? Because I know we voted the revolving fund at the annual town meeting. from Karen Reynolds complimenting Ryan Point Brand uh, for the work they did on Molasses Hill Road last summer. Um, I guess for the last 30 years they've had drainage problems for the last 25 uh, and they, to the point of having their septic system fill up with the groundwater that was run off of the road. Uh, multiple highway department heads tried to solve the problem without any results. Uh, Ryan did um, make sure that the storm drains had added catch basins from the top of the hill downward, and replace small berms along several house properties to direct the water away from the property frontage. When it rained, he came out to check and see that the changes were working. Uh, this has been one of the worst July's on record for rainfall, and they haven't had to pump their septic once, never mind the two or three times that it's happened in the past. Uh, so he, she wanted to recognize Ryan and the whole highway department for doing a, an excellent job with yeah. the drainage work yeah. on the last so road, which is lovely to hear. Yeah, that's nice to hear. Nice compliment. So. Right, and I think we're at the end of our open meeting agenda. Um, and I'd like a motion to uh, enter executive session under exemption two to conduct oh. strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or conduct collective oh. bargaining oh. sessions for contract negotiations with non-union personnel. I would like to make a motion to go into executive session under number two, and then to come back in and, and uh, adjourn our regular session. Okay, I'll second. All in favor? Uh, Lincoln, I. Kaufman, I. Okay. 